In his only state of the state address as governor, he was also very candid. He didn't use any notes and he was direct speaking to the people of Kansas in this case today. That's right. We haven't heard from the school district, the county attorney's office or the Baser Police Department in over six months. Then all of a sudden today we learned that a charge was filed. So a lot of the authorities are simply asking people to stay off the roads altogether. Limit your travel. It's kind of a wait and see approach from the city as every winter storm is different. One thing certain we will get our fair share of winter weather over the course of the season. Beautiful, look at this. LHS marching band hat. That is just perfect. That's exactly what I need. And some drumsticks, armed with drumsticks now. Mark Mancino showed up on time for his weekly radio show. A couple of changes though, a different vehicle and a different entrance. Here real quick. Can we get just a quick word with you, Coach? Coach, can we get a quick word with you? See, the mood here 30 minutes ago was dismal when KU was down nine. Now they have won the national title. The change comes, however, with the city deciding to hold off on citations for another week. The average play musical can cost anywhere from five, six, ten thousand dollars This one? 80 bucks, not too bad. <laughs> These programs are struggling and doing more with less, but teachers and students are adapting and they're coming up with some incredible work in the process. A devastating chemical spill here in East Lawrence at Magnagro claims the life of two, sends one more to the hospital in critical condition, and throughout the years, it's a location that firefighters are familiar with. The scene was difficult to watch following an industrial accident around 2.45 this afternoon. That's where fire and medical crews were called to reports of a fall. What we found were two individuals located inside of a tank. Uh, the initial investigation has just revealed that it's, it's a type of industrial accident. One person clinging to life was rushed to an area hospital. Two others never made it out today. Fire crews tell us that the unknown chemical isn't known to be extremely hazardous except for in confined spaces. We believe that we've confirmed what the product is, but we want to make sure that there weren't additional materials combined with one another. Fire crews work to decontaminate themselves after rushing inside the building. Chief Bradford tells us one firefighter suffered a respiratory injury as well. That's not believed to be life threatening. We call it gross decontamination where we have a product that we believe is not hazardous. Uh, that's why we're just flushing it off onto the grounds. In all, a situation at a warehouse firefighters know well that has everyone, including neighbors, on edge tonight. Well, something to think about, obviously. Um, you know, the whole idea of this place is to stay healthy, and uh, but uh, I just pray to God that they're uh, doing everything they're supposed to do over there, and uh, they're not doing anything that's going to hurt the rest of us. We have to wait and see. Again, it, it, it's an investigation. It, uh, it may not be anything criminal in nature. We have to investigate to see. Now, business neighbors in the area didn't want to speak with us on camera, but they did tell us that there have been many spills in the area, even running right up this street right here, and they are certainly on edge for their own safety and the practices that are going on inside this building. Of course, the investigation right now is ongoing, and we'll have more information for you as soon as it comes available. When we heard it and just sound like someone was shooting at the Quonset. This rare September storm traveled a ferocious path through southeastern Douglas County. Came up from the southwest across the cornfield, jumped the tree line and laid into the barn and outbuildings. Weaving its way through area farms, the tornado first touched down here on North 800 Road, about five miles south of Eudora. It took a big 40-foot Connex, picked it up, crushed trees, crushed a car. The storm continued northeast. Two miles later, here on 2300 Road, three young kids were home when the Gabriel family farm was hit. This storm reportedly only lasted about three minutes here on this property. As you can see, it blew the concrete walls out of this outbuilding clear out from underneath it. The roof just fell right on on top of it. The residents that were home at the time of the storm were located just a couple hundred feet away in the Quonset nearby. It started raining really hard and we could hear it hit, like the lights went off in the Quonset and we could hear it hitting. The silver lining to the surprise storm, as is the case with both damaged locations, no one was injured and the main homes untouched. You got it, you got it. Okay, on to a new station. Kindergarten okay. is filled with one life lesson right. and one milestone after another. So I'm going to make 20 tallies. In Mrs. Bedimlage's room, to reach those, her students are also learning to live by these character traits. Okay, you have seven more. But today, on a special day of school,
the 100th okay. day, let's specifically cars? talk about caring, because today's lesson the teaches cars, these young students to put emotion into their work. Well, it's a little girl and a little boy that's holding up a heart. Along with the typical 100th day activities, football, basketball, and volleyball, like adding up individual items, and baseball, that equal 100. You ready to be my helper? They're also counting money. Sixty-six. One dollar at a time. Seven. Each eight, dollar from each two, student in every grade level school-wide was raised prior to the 100th day of school seven, through hard work at home. Help my mom clean. It's help my sister do stuff. Each chore and each dollar is being put towards a special cause. And so I just thought, 100, how about let's challenge each, each grade level to raise $100. For Haiti. My school can help in Haiti. With this unique activity, Mrs. Bedimlija wants her students to think outside of themselves. People were in the house and they, and they got hurt. Beyond their classroom and gain perspective along the way. I help Haiti because they are poor. Consider it another life lesson learned. We're on a day filled with numbers. It's proven that when you put your heart into your work, you can succeed. So what number are we at now? And that's a milestone in itself. Good evening and thanks for joining us. I'm Mark Boyle. Well, parents, teachers, and community members packed South Junior High trying to come up with ways to cut $5 million from the district's budget. It was a discussion that was at times emotional as parents pleaded with the board members not to close neighborhood schools. At least one parent of a child with special needs told board members her family would likely leave Kansas if their neighborhood school was shut down. But other parents say it's better to close a school than to increase class sizes, something that could affect the quality of education for all students across across the district. One thing everyone agreed on, the board has a very tough task before them. Tonight's forum was the first of four that are planned. The next chance to offer your ideas is February 15th at Southwest Junior High School. Detailed information about possible cuts can be found on the district's website at the bottom of your screen. Okay, thanks so much, Matt. New tonight at 10, a KU employee is suspected of using a university credit card for personal use. Police say the suspect charged over $500 at the Hy-Vee on 6th Street. The charges were made between December 11th and February 3rd. The employee had access to the card for university reasons. The case will be referred to the Douglas County District Attorney for possible prosecution. The Kansas Department of Health and Environment issues an emergency order forcing the 12th and Haskell Bargain Center to make immediate changes. The KDHE is ordering the owner of the salvage yard to cease and desist unlawful activity at the site following seven fires at the facility since 2004. Brook Creek neighborhood residents who live directly across from the salvage yard have been calling for changes at the facility following a January 27th fire that ignited six cars. KDHE has sent investigators to the site who determined the operators of the salvage yard were not properly removing gasoline and other flammable liquids from vehicles before crushing them. Investigators found nearly 100 salvaged vehicles on the site that still contained flammable liquids. They also found discarded air conditioning units that still contained refrigerant. KDHE ordered the facility to immediately stop demolishing vehicles until all hazardous materials had been removed. A Kansas legislator wants a law allowing mountain lion hunting in Kansas. Representative Mitch Holmes says mountain lion sightings are increasing in Kansas and endanger livestock and farmers. The state already allows people to shoot a mountain lion on personal property, but it's illegal to own a mountain lion carcass.